Ellen Frank. I'm a physical therapy student at UC. Um, I've already fully introduced myself to Courtney before getting started with any of our activities. I have thoroughly washed my hands and all of our equipment um, has been washed for use. So Courtney has, um, I've explained what we're going to be doing to her today and I will again um, throughout this video, but she has consented to the treatment that we are going to do. So Courtney, are you ready to get started? Yes, I am. All right, so um, with our parallel bars today, before we do any um, gait pattern activities, what we're gonna start with is the proper fit um, for a patient. So that's very important uh, to begin with. We're gonna start, we have three key points um, to go for. So the first thing that we're gonna do, um, Courtney, if it's okay with you, I am just gonna find your greater trochanter on the um, lateral part of your thigh on the outside here. So I'm going to come down from her hip and I'm right on top of it here. So that's the first landmark we want to find. Um, if I would also have Courtney, if you could just relax your arm down, that's great. Another point that you can look for on a patient is the crease of their wrist. Um, or you can also look for um, the styloid process on the ulna. So her wrist crease is a little bit further down from her greater trochanter. So I went ahead and um, placed the parallel bar about midway between those two points. So um, the next part, if she were to rest her hands comfortably on the parallel bars, we're gonna look for about um, 20 to 25 degrees of elbow flexion. So when you're first getting started with that, this activity, you can use um, a goniometer if you want to be sure of um, the right you know, uh, degree of flexion, but as you get used to prepping this activity, you will be able to eyeball. Um, we always want to make sure the patient is comfortable with where those bars are located, which Courtney, is that a comfortable position for you? Yes. Great, so um, we're good on that front. So then the last point, the third point we want to go over is um, the space between her hips, our patient's hips, and the parallel bars themselves. So you want to gauge um, somewhere between two to four inches of space for uh, her to complete these gait patterns, which Courtney has um, as well. So on all fronts, we are good for fit of our parallel bars. So Courtney, are you ready to get started with the ambulation techniques? Sure. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, as you might have noticed, I have already properly fit a gait belt on our patient. We wanna make sure that we are maintaining her safety and stability at all times. Um, so as we do these activities, I am gonna be grabbing from under the gait belt and then resting my hand um, gently on her shoulder for guidance um, and protection. So Courtney, the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna get you used to having a little bit less stability um, than you have right now with these parallel bars. Are you okay with that? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna have you do is while I'm, um, I'm gonna be holding on to you the whole time so you're perfectly safe, you are just simply going to shift your weight to each side of your body and maybe try and hold there for about five seconds. So on the count of three, the two of us, um, I'm gonna have you shift to the left side. Um, are you ready to do that? Mm -hmm. All right, so one, two, three. All right, and we can come back to center. How'd that feel? Good. Okay, so now we're gonna do that on this um, right side, the same thing. One, two, three. Good, still okay? Mm -hmm. All right, now we're gonna go forward. One, two, three. Good, and now you can come back. One, two, three, towards me. Great. All right, we can go back to center. How does that feel? Good. All right, so the next step we're gonna take is we are just gonna, one at a time, you're going to lift um, your left arm up in the air, take that off the bar for a count of five, and then we'll put that um, bar firmly, or hand firmly back down on the bar and lift uh, the right side up, okay? Okay, so one, two, three. All right, good. And one, two, three. Good job. Still feel okay? Yes. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do before we start walking is I'm gonna have you um, simultaneously, if you can, you are going to lift your right hand off of the bar and your left leg off of the ground. Does that sound okay to you? Do you think yes. you can do both at the same time? Yes. All right, so we're gonna do that and hold for that count of five. One, two, three. Great, how'd that feel? Good. All right, now we'll do the other side. One two, three. 
All right, great. So do you feel um, firmly okay if I let go of the gate belt? Sure. All right, so I'm gonna let go because the next thing we're gonna do um, is just practice a very simple gate pattern. So I'm gonna demonstrate uh, this to Courtney before she does it so she can actually watch me. So I'm gonna come um, in front of you here and you can follow me along. I'm just gonna do one step. We're not gonna practice um, specific gait patterns at this time, but I wanna just get her used to um, some movement with her arms and legs using the parallel bars. So when we're ready to start, what you're going to do is you're gonna take um, a step forward with your left leg, and then you're gonna move your right hand forward along the bar, okay? And then you'll bring the right hand, or foot um, up to join the left, and that left hand to join the right. Does that sound okay? Yes. All right, wonderful. So before we get started, I'm gonna make sure I come back behind Courtney so she feels safe and secure again. Same positioning I was in before. So Courtney, are you ready to start? Mm -hmm. All right, which leg do you wanna step with first? Left. All right, so we're gonna do left hand first and then followed by her right arm. Are you ready on the count of three? Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna go on one, two, three. And then followed by that right arm and then you can bring that right leg and then left arm and then you can bring them together. Great, so how'd that feel? Good. Good? Mm -hmm. All right, so those are the activities um, we're gonna start with today on the parallel bars. Courtney felt safe doing everything that she did. Her gait pattern looked good. Um, when we're working with these activities, we always wanna be sure to ask our patient what their functional need is going to be once we are finished with their therapy because we want to send them home um, prepared to safely do all of the activities they will be doing in their day-to-day -day lives. So um, I'll be seeing Courtney back here and we will progress from where we were today. But um, do you have any questions before we finish up our session? No. All right, so that is all we have for the parallel bars. Thank you. All right, so we are back with Courtney for our second part of our session. We are going to talk about proper fit um, and basic ambulation with a cane. Um, specifically today, we are using a four-legged cane. So Courtney, are you ready to get started again? Yes, I am. All right, so the fit of a cane is very similar um, to that of a par the parallel bars. So the first thing we want to be sure to do, again, we're going to try and line um, this up a little bit with Courtney's hips. Um, even a little further down. So again, I am going to find her greater trochanter, which I'm on right now, and we can look again if she's just relaxed with her arm um, straight down, standing straight up, that wrist crease. So again, like I said before, um, they're kind of one's lower than the other, so I tried to find a point about halfway between um, to fit her with this cane. Uh, different, you know, there are different canes that you can use. Like I said, we're using a four-legged cane. So with this, um, the biggest thing that you want to be sure of is that the flat part of the legs is the closest um, to the side of your patient's body. If this were to be turned around, uh, as the patient moved it forward, it uh, leaves the risk of her tripping over the legs of the cane, which obviously we want to uh, fully avoid. So again, after we fit the height of the cane, um, we're again looking for that 20 to 25 degrees of elbow flexion on her side, and we want to be sure that the cane is placed um, to the side of her outside foot um, at least two inches, and then four to six inches in front of that foot. So Courtney, does that feel comfortable? Yes. Okay, I'm just gonna move it a little bit back for that elbow flexion we're looking for. Great, okay. So before we get started with this, again, I'm coming behind my patient under that gait belt and um, to the side of her with my hand on her shoulder for extra support. Courtney, do you feel stable? Mm -hmm. All right, so when um, we step forward with the cane, since the cane is um, being used by her right hand, her left side is our injured side. So you want to have the cane opposite the side that is um, injured at the current time. But when we step forward, at the same time, you will step with that bad leg, your left leg, and bring the right um, cane or the, the cane forward with your right hand to meet that left leg, okay? okay? Do you want me to demonstrate that to you? No, I think I got it. Okay. All right, so on the count of three, we're going to take that first step, okay? Okay. One, two, three. And then you can bring that right foot forward. How'd that feel? Good. All right, let's take two more. Okay. One, two, three. And then you can do this one when you're ready. Great, all right, does that all feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. So again, um, the fit of the cane is 
similar to that of the parallel bars, but the fit is very important um, from the beginning because if you start your patient off with the wrong fit, obviously that's going to lead to some risks um, and problems down the road. So um, again, with this skill, Courtney, do you feel comfortable with what we learned today? Yes, I do. All Thank right. You. So um, we are good to go. I will clean this equipment once our patient leaves and I will get ready for our next one.